Hi, I'm Arrow Johnson. Welcome to Access Bellingham. Uh, today I want to talk about lighting. And for me, lighting is one of the most creative, one of the most interesting parts about making videos. It is really where uh, you can start to create drama, you can create the mood of the shot, and you can really start to manipulate the image to tell the story. Whenever I have lights set up, that's when someone walks on set and says, oh wow, this, this really looks like a movie set. It looks like you're actually doing something here. Um, so the lights, lights really stand out. And because of this, I think there's a tendency to think of lighting as very complicated. That you have to have all these really expensive lights and they get ridiculously expensive. Um, and that you have to really understand all the, you know, what is a key light, a hair light, a rim light, you need all this terminology, you need to understand color temperatures, you need all this complex knowledge. And um, I wanna take us, I wanna step way, way back away from that. And to remind us that every time you press record on your camera, you are lighting. That without lights, you don't have an image, you just have pure darkness. So you are always lighting. So our idea today is if you, even if you don't have really expensive gear, you are still lighting. And often that comes down to making good choices on location. To find a place on location where you do have nice light, maybe coming in through some big windows, and to set your subject or to manipulate the situation so you're making the most out of that available light. So even if you don't actually have uh, proper film lights on light stands and lighting gear, you can still create really nice uh, lighting. So within those parameters, lighting really comes down to choosing the right location, um, making choices about the available light that you have, and then also exposing correctly to make the most out of that available light. To understand your shutter, your aperture, your ISO, all those, your neutral density filters, all those pieces to get the right exposure for the lighting that you're given. Exposure is a lesson for a different time. I just want to focus on the lighting right now. But the point being that you're always lighting and you're always trying to make the most out of the available light, even if you don't have proper lighting equipment with you. So I think the best way to demonstrate this is through example. And the example will be this situation right here. So we walk into this location and the story, the idea is that whoever's sitting in the seat is imparting information to the viewer. That's what we need this image to do. Whoever's sitting here is uh, imparting information. That's a concept, that's the idea, that's the story we wanna tell. We don't need dramatic lighting, this isn't a detective show, this isn't like some sort of an interrogation. Uh, we are just simply teaching. So knowing that, we can start making decisions about the location. We can first place the subject in front of a nice yellow wall, makes it a nice friendly tone, and we can utilize these two big windows that we have here in the kitchen. And that's it, that's all the lights we have. We have no proper lights, we just have big window lights coming in and set, setting up the camera in front of a friendly location. With that said, there are a couple of other small things that um, I manipulated, and I think it's important to point those out so that, so that the idea is not simply to sit in front of a window, but to really look and see what minor modifications we can make with the available lighting to make the most out of that location. So let me take us all the way back to where we started. With, uh, with no light.
this is where the scene started. Uh, you've got the bright light back there, which is distracting from the image. You don't have near enough light on me. It just, uh, you know, same location, but it just doesn't work. So the first thing we need to do is open these curtains and get some, and get some light onto our subject. This is the obvious part of the journey. Of course we need these curtains. There we go, curtains are open, but we still have that distracting light behind us. So let's deal with that right now. All right, so far all of that's pretty obvious and um, I don't think anyone would figure that out. But I'm gonna do two small details that I think make a difference. The first one is there is still light shining underneath that blind when it's closed. And to me, it's a distraction. So I'm going to go fix that. The other thing, there's a little bit of reflection from one of these curtains that I don't care for. So I'm going to close that curtain. So I actually ended up pulling the blind, not just down, but all the way over the, um, the windowsill in order to cut out that light. And the reason I wanna bring up all of these things is because they only take moments, but it's these little details that can make a difference. And now we have our scene. Again, could it be improved upon? Uh, very likely, but uh, for what we're doing, I, uh, I think it's completely acceptable and uh, it works great. And it's so easy to set up that it's something I can do over and over again without having to bring in big lights or, um, or extra crew or anything like that. This is definitely something you can do as a one person crew. All right, however, I want to take it one step further. Now what I almost always do is to take the available light and see if there's a way I can enhance it. Um, some people have the, the skills and the budget to block out, black out the entire room and start from scratch, building um, trusses or waffles along the ceiling and hanging lights. Um, finding ways to hide lights in small places and to really um, spend time starting from scratch. I never do that as to the best of my recollection. I, I can't remember doing that. I always take the available light and start to work with that. So in this case, what I want to do is just simply get a little more light onto this image. I'm not going to try to change it. I just want to add a little light and see what happens. So I'm going to take a light and put it right over here just to add to what these open windows are doing. I'm not going to put it on this side. Otherwise, I'll be in competition. I'll have light coming from both ways and it'll just sort of flatten the image. I just want to add a little bit, I want to enhance what's already there. So let's give this a shot, let's see what happens. Alright. Alright, so I haven't changed the light as much as I've just added a little something to it. Uh, and I won't know if it works better until I take a closer look at this image, but uh, I'm going to guess that uh, because I had to turn the ISO down a little bit, um, I'll have a slightly cleaner image, and that just having a little extra light into the eyes and from one side will add a little, just a touch of interest to it. 
we'll see, uh, we'll see what happens when I start editing. So that is basically the heart of what I wanted to share with you. That understand the story, understand the idea and the concept, and then you don't need big lights. You don't need any fancy equipment. You can, but always be thinking about lighting. How does the light affect the mood of the image? There's one other really important note before we move on, and that is, although we're talking about light, I really put light, um, light is a few rungs down on the ladder of importance. If I walk into a location and I need audio, audio is the first thing I pay attention to. Sound is so important and it's so difficult to fix. If there is a big generator humming, or if there's machinery going, or if there's someone chainsawing in the background, that stuff stands out like crazy, and it cannot be fixed, or it's really difficult to fix. So the first thing I do when I walk onto a location then, is I listen for sound. The second thing is just the design of the location. If there is something really cool I can point my camera at that helps tell the story, that is the second thing I'll look for. So if I'm, um, you know, if I'm working with a welder and I walk in to the shop and there's a lot of people welding and pounding things, I have to find another location. But if the shop is quiet, then I can find a way to use my camera to make sure there's some interesting equipment or something like that in the background. Even if the lighting isn't perfect, I'll choose the cool equipment because that is what really tells the story. And then hopefully I can bring in maybe one light, maybe two lights and enhance um, the image. But even if there is, even if I don't bring lights, I'll still choose having something in the background that really helps tell the story. And then finally, the final part of that is the lighting. Is there a way I can manipulate this image a little bit move the person forward, move, uh, you know, move the camera somewhere to, to make the most out of that available light. So that is really the, the hierarchy of what I look for when I go on a location. I'm looking for good sound, cool looking location, and how do I use the available light to my advantage. So that is, that's the whole, that's it. That's, that's the whole thing. But what I want to do now is to play a little bit. I want to see if I can make this shot even more interesting. I want to see if I can, um, you know, maybe I'll try adding a little hair light here. Maybe I'll try adding something in the background, see if that can improve the shot. Or maybe I'll even try moving to a totally different angle and trying something a little dramatic and see if it works for what we're doing. I don't know what's going to happen. I'm going to invite you to come along this journey with me and we'll just play with lighting a little bit and uh, see what happens. This is not unusual. This is often how I figure things out is I just add a light, take away a light, play a little bit and finally come up with something that works for the story and for the idea that I'm trying to convey. Again, it's all about the story. All right, let's, uh, let me get some lights and let's see what happens. All right, the first thing I wanna do is pop on a little back. create something that creates a little interest in that, in the, in the sculptures and the art here, and hopefully hits me just on the side of the face a little bit. All right, so that's a totally different look. Um, that is just one backlight right behind me. 
Uh, it's an Airy 350, I believe. Yeah, Airy 350. Um, and it has some diffusion on it. I often use diffusion if I'm going to, um, if I'm going to hit someone with a hair light or something. Uh, it's, I just don't like the light super ultra, ultra hard. So, um, that's where I'll start. And now as I'm looking at this, I think, um, a little, a little light to this side of the face. I've also closed the curtains down. Um, just again, we're going to try to create a little more drama and see what happens. This is why I often advocate for uh, available light and um, um, just using what you have because as soon as you get a couple of lights going, um, I should have a stand in here because I can't, you know, I can look at the monitor and I think it looks good, but I need to be able to go make adjustments with someone sitting here um, so I can really see what's happening. As soon as you get a couple of lights, you're moving into a whole nother realm. And, uh, and if you have a lighting crew, that's great. But I know for a lot of our access stuff, we're just going out with one or two people. And, uh, so again, that's why I advocate for, um, keeping your lighting really, really simple, uh, until you have a big crew and budgets and time to deal with, uh, you know, more than one light. It'll be difficult for me to really fine tune the lighting without, um, without somebody, without a face sitting here so I can see what it, how the light is actually playing off of the person, the subject. All right, as I monkey around here, I think it's really important to remember an essential fact, which is that I am making a video where I want people to trust me. I am teaching, I'm imparting information, and this lighting does not do that. I'm definitely going to need more light on my face. I'm going to want to be able to see my eyes. Um, so as long as I'm going down this journey, I said I was going to do it with two lights. I'm just going to add a third light right out front to just give me a little bit of eye light and we'll see what happens. I think I'm also going to move this light um, so it's not quite so brutally half lit. And here we have our more elaborate lighting setup. Um, to go through what we've done, right behind me we have an Airy 350 with a blue gel over it. That blue is to match the daylight coming in from the window. Uh, the other two lights we're using are both um, at 3200 Kelvin, which is an orange color compared to the, uh, the blue light which is, as I'm speaking, I'm realizing this is a lesson for another time. We'll talk about white balance, we'll talk about colors, the color of light another time. Um, but we do have blue light behind us, blue daylight. We have the orange lights here. We have this soft um, LED, and then we have a little Airy 150 giving a little bit of light to my eyes. Um, then we have a bounce right here. I don't know if the, the bounce is even playing, but um, it doesn't hurt to have it there, so we'll leave it. Uh, and then we have a, a little bit of a little bit of set decoration here to hopefully add some visual interest. So this is our alternative setup. Is it better than the than simply opening the uh, curtains and allowing some daylight in? You know that's really that's a choice that's based on the story, the idea, uh, the director's vision. There's not necessarily a right or wrong or a better or worse. This is just an alternative. 
I'm hoping, sadly, I'm not able to see it. I don't have, uh, I, I don't have the monitor close enough. Um, so I won't know how it really looks until I start editing. I'm hoping it's a little more, there's a little more visual interest, it's a little more dramatic, and I think if, um, for a lesson about lighting, it's appropriate to have a little more dramatic lighting than just uh, what's coming in from the windows. With that said, I really think about the most beautiful lighting is natural light coming through windows. So never ignore natural light coming through windows. It is great light and it's simple and it's fast. All right, that is our lesson for the week. Re remember, every time you turn on a camera, you don't need anything elaborate but you should always be thinking about lighting. Your lighting every time you decide where you're going to point the camera. Thank you so much for going on this journey with me. I had a great time, as I said earlier. I love playing with lighting, so this is always fun for me. And I'm really looking forward to when we are through phase three, phase four. We're getting back together and we're having experiences like this and we're exploring and sharing ideas together. Until then, have a great week, and I will see you at our online classes and on our Facebook group where you can connect. And of course, if you have questions about this or anything else, put it out there, and myself or someone in the group, I'm sure will answer. All right, have a great rest of the week.